So this video will show you how to use Velocity on the iX81. Uh, it won't be a full description of the Velocity software. Uh, it will assume that you have already been trained on the VX61 and know uh, the basic outline of Velocity. And I will just focus on the ways that this microscope is different uh, from the VX61. So let's go ahead and start Velocity by clicking there. Okay, this is the same as the other one. We just need to create a new library. So again, in this computer, there's a drive specially for data. There's a user data folder. And I'm gonna create uh, something in my particular folder. So I usually give it the name of today's date, just like on the VX61. So now I'm gonna click here. It says Video Preview Hamamatsu. All right. Um, this system also has two cameras like the VX61. So if both cameras are on and it doesn't say Hamamatsu here and here, you can switch to it by going to video and the first um, item in this uh, menu will be source and you can switch between the cameras if for some reason they're both on. So this system um, is a little bit different from the VX61. It, it has many, many more settings uh, available to you uh, than the BX61, and they're all in this strip. So let's talk about those settings. So, um, you know, there's bright field uh, for the eyes, DAPI, FITSI, Texas Red, Psi 5, Psi 7, and you can see that some of the settings say eyes, and some of them some ca say camera only. There are, and that's true for face contrast settings, and for a number of other ones as well. So it's camera only, camera only, camera only, eyes. So you can see there are many different settings. So which should you use? Um, so if you just wanna look by eye, you should use an eye setting. Um, if you want to uh, actually take an image and there's the option of using an eye setting or a, or a camera one, uh, you should use the camera one. So let me show, see if I can show you an example of that. So for example, for phase contrast, if you're doing phase contrast with the 4X objective, there's a, a setting called phase 4X camera fast. That setting uh, will be much better to take phase contrast images with the camera than to use the one uh, that says phase 4x eyes and, and in addition in addition to being faster it'll be better aligned so keep that in mind when you're uh, deciding on which settings to use the other thing uh, uh, sort of so so sort of difference number one to summarize is there are many more settings there are some that are calibrated to be uh, appropriate for you to see things by eye uh, not everything that you can see on the camera is visible by eye and if you have the option of a setting by eye or one with the camera, when you're taking images, you should use the camera one because it's gonna be better aligned and faster. So that's sort of first category of differences, many more settings and sort of more subtleties to the settings. Another uh, difference um, in the system is that to control the intensity of light, we can use uh, this dial. So instead of having neutral density filters at the back of the microscope, uh, to routinely control the intensity. We can do it, uh, the, the light source is a LED and we can control the intensity dynamically by just moving this. Uh, so it has sort of a dimmer switch. Um, okay, so that's another difference. Uh, another, uh, another issue with this system is that the camera has a dynamic range that's much higher than the one on the VX61. So if you recall on the VX61, saturated pixels are at 4,095. Uh, on this system, we can get saturation at around 65,000. So the camera has a much wider range. It can look at really dim things and really bright things uh, all at once. So that's a, a nice feature, but it has some effects that you need to be aware of. To show you those effects, I'm going to uh, put something in the field of view. Uh, so you can see a few of the subtleties of this camera compared to the other that stem for the, from this large dynamic range. Uh, and a few other characteristics.
So I am going to focus on something and then I'll continue this video. So I have just focused on something by eye. Uh, one other difference between this system and the VX61 is that to switch to looking at things by eye and with the camera, there's a button, which is that one. So while I was focusing on things by eye, uh, I pressed the button so it was in the eyepiece uh, 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 setting. And, and the light therefore came up to the eyepieces and I could see it when I looked uh, down them. Now I want to look at uh, the image, uh, sort of the sample with the camera. So I'm gonna press this button. And so now the light is gonna go from the sample down the microscope and instead of to the front and to the eyepieces, it's going to go to the camera over here. All right, so I have that in position. Now I'm going to click on the shutter which is um, this one. And so here we can see the image um, and focus. So a few comments uh, about this camera. So this camera has slightly different settings. It doesn't have an offset. It doesn't have a gain. It has a mode. You should always have it on high quality mode. It has an auto contrast option, which in this case is very useful to have on because if you turn it off, what happens is that sometimes uh, the image will be too dim and that's because of that giant dynamic range. Uh, so now there it's on uh, of, the of the camera. Uh, so you typically want that on, you want the binning at one. And here the exposure, uh, what you want is to set it to something that gives you nice contrast and where the pixel values, if you look up here, don't exceed around 40,000. So remember, this one saturates at 65,000. Um, so we have a much larger range. You typically don't want to go much above, above 40,000. Uh, and you can go much, much lower and still get acceptable signal to noise. So for example, if I make the exposure of 100 milliseconds, you can see that now that's about 4,000. Uh, this is the maximum pixel value. And if I look here and just focus on this, focus. Um, you can't see it very well on the phone, so I'm just going to increase the contrast by moving the slider. And there we go. So now we have a very nice image. This slider that I moved here, remember, just changes the brightness of the image without affecting the data. But that's a pretty nice image uh, that we can get with this camera. Um, again, what are the differences? many more settings. Uh, the camera doesn't have quite the same settings as the other one. You should use auto contrast and to switch between camera and eyepiece, you need to use the button that is visible here, okay? Everything else about velocity is the same, all right? Uh, one final thing, just to reiterate, if you wanna change the power, you can do so by moving this. So for example, if I lower this from 50% to 10%, I expect that this intensity that I see here is going to go down, uh, in this case, by a factor of about five. So uh, why don't we make it easier? I'll take it down from 50% to 5%. You'll see that because I have auto contrast on, I can still see the image. It seems to be flickering. That's because it's not super bright. And then this right here is much lower, okay? Um, that is basically it. Uh, everything else in, in velocity is the same as on the BX61. Uh, you still do use uh, the acquisition setup to set up multiple channels. You still use this to save. Uh, everything else is, is pretty much the same. So if you know how to use the BX61 and you've watched this video, um, you should be in good shape to use the iX81 with velocity.